Hello, uh, my name is Calvin Wurst. And I'm Henry Arnold. We watched uh, The Seven Samurai by Akira, Akira Kurosawa. Kurosawa. <laughs> what were your first, uh, what, did you like the movie? Yeah, honestly, uh, I loved it. It was a it was a long movie, but um, definitely. Yeah, but I, I I honestly I couldn't take my ass off it. Yeah, I mean three and a half hours, definitely a bit of a chore. I had to watch it in two chunks. Um, yeah, same. But amazing movie. Um, I guess the first point I'll get into is Kurosawa's use of nature, um, and like weather, lighting, stuff like that. I think there were so many scenes with like rain wind like just what like the first initial scene where we meet the first samurai when he's saving the kid there's a lot of wind in the background he's sitting by the flowing stream like shaving his head the stream just looks amazing like it's like glittering and stuff like that um so i think that adds like another huge element i think um it's really easy to tell like the underlying theme or like feeling of a scene because like every time it was like something bad was going to happen it was raining or when they're all like down on their luck they don't have any rice left it's raining stuff like that so i think nature was a huge aspect of the movie and i think he was just one of the greats with nature yeah you you definitely tell like if, like for example when the um with all the flowers when the when the younger samurai mm -hmm. was right before it's like it was a very it, it gave you like a very tranquil vibe and like, yeah i don't even think there's any um like, i don't even think throughout the movie anything went wrong within that little flower yeah. scene like a like action or you know death wise um true yeah um and then yeah on to the uh on to the younger samurai um so i actually i was doing some reading on the way over here um and uh kurashawa he actually made a dossier on every single samurai from when wow. writing the movie so he would write down every single detail that um that he could think of about them and i, I really feel like that that shown through in the movie with every single samurai you could yeah. tell like you felt connected to every single one of them. Um, they had a lot of individualism, like they were, they're great characters. Yeah, like in, in such a stark contrast between the uh, the master swordsman, I, I forget his name, and then the yeah. and the crazier farmer guy who was like cosplaying the samurai. <laughs> yeah. yeah, but it, it just, it works so well. Um, mm -hmm. And uh, and yeah, I, I, I really, I, I appreciate when a, when a director actually goes, in, when a director and he's also a writer too, yeah. when they go into detail and really take the time to flesh out a character and not just have them be, mm -hmm. you know, a, a meat sack to be, to be poked. Another thing I thought was like really interesting, like, um, like the battle scenes, it was really refreshing to like, he doesn't focus solely on the main character. He shows the enemies a lot more and like the deaths, just like a still shot, still frame for like 30 seconds as the guy just like stands there and then falls over. You knew exactly what was happening the entire time. <laughs> no, no, no shaky cam. Yeah. Or, <laughs> um, but I mean, he did that every time. Like every time a, a character died, you were watching the character fall and die rather than just watching the protagonist. Yeah. Just like. Just mow down. Just people. like a close-up face shot. I, the entire uh, time. I actually I really appreciated him showing you know the characters or the the bandits falling off the horses and stuff. Yes. Yeah. Like, weren't you like counting down the uh, the, the deaths and you're yeah. like, 13 left, I would no more die. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. He did a great job. And I mean, for that whole time, it was just raining, it was muddy, the weather was really bad the entire mm -hmm. time. And I think that just that added layers to it. This is something the entire movie did. It really made you realize the weight behind what it means to be a samurai on both yeah. sides. Like, you, you you have to be a master swordsman. You have to, to, to really understand what what it means to, to respect, you know, your fellow man and yeah. your, you know, the nature and just your community. But at the same time, you have to be willing to lay down your lives. You know, um, when a, when every single one of the protagonists died, the, the only people that spent an excessive amount of time mourning were the townspeople. Mm -hmm. You know, like, I mean, obviously, you know, a friend dies and gets sad, yeah. but, but the samurai said, okay, you know, it's like, if, if, we, if we keep crying right now, this isn't going to do anything for our present situation. So they really, they, 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 they really made you, they really forced you to understand what, what it, what it meant when, um, when someone called you a samurai. I, I really appreciate that. Yeah. I, and figuring off that, like with the, the, the very reckless samurai who like, isn't really a samurai. He was like a farmer and he was kind of ashamed of it. Mm -hmm. Um, like I, he's kind of like an anti-hero in a sense. Cause it's like, he's not a good, he's like kind of an annoying character. Yeah. Like he's always doing, he's like very pompous, but 
it's like he just wants to be a samurai. Yeah. And like the samurai stand for good stuff, so like he might be a good guy. Kind of like there wasn't really a redemption arc entirely for him. They kind of accepted him, which was like Yeah. Sort of, yeah. I don't know. I enjoyed that character, but I think um something that I noticed with him, I'm just thinking about this right now. So okay, so all the samurai there were wearing their kimonos, right? And they yep. could only take out their katana when they're when they're gonna yeah. use it, right? I think the only time we saw a the only times that, that we saw them taking out their katanas besides killing people was um was was when the uh the swordsman the, the one who was really good he was practicing or when they were trying to rile up you know their their teammates but but with the the reckless guy like he was always flaunting it um he 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 didn't have it he didn't have it kimono. like all the other ones they would like tuck it right back in but yeah he, he was he was using it as a display of power as yeah. opposed to the other samurai who just their presence yeah, yeah. using it like yeah like it's, I think that's, that's kind of the theme, like using it to protect someone rather than using it to like have power over someone. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, we didn't. They didn't really pull out their katanas that much, mm -hmm. which is true. And also, like when they put it back in, or like when they pulled it out, like I'm you're used to like when a sword gets pulled out, like the mm -hmm. shing, like yeah. the really loud noise. But it was just like completely silent. Yeah, I, and think, I thought that was I thought that was pretty cool. I think that also goes back to or not goes back to, but I think that touches on what we were talking about how every single death matter yeah and um and uh i think we're like we can re-record these points and stuff too but um, yeah. um i don't know if you want to say this but uh but how kurosawa like every single time someone died it was focused on the consequences and the effect mm -hmm. of the death as opposed to the death itself right i think maybe that that, that kind of touched on um or i i think maybe that that was shown through how you're talking about with the katanas you know mm -hmm. in every other samurai film like it focuses a lot on like how cool the weapons are yeah. and you know and, and like oh my god like you know this katana is thousand years old and it's enchanted with magic but um, yeah. the movie the movie even did the opposite of that when um yeah. when uh when the reckless one when the reckless samurai when he came in with all the gear and i was stuff, just thinking that yeah yeah, like with, yeah. The, with the armor and stuff yeah like if it was like a normal samurai movie they'd be they put it on and they'd look really cool mm -hmm. but then like he really pushed like the the like respect or like just the honor code that samurai have by not wearing the the armor i thought that was really cool and i think as well with like the silence of the swords i think like the stillness and the he used stillness and silence so well in that movie like we were talking about the first like i think that was the first duel scene we saw with like the really skilled samurai um it just like it's there's a crowd behind him there's like the wind, it kind of like it's been wind like the whole time before. And then the crowd's there, they're not moving. There's no wind in the background. And then right in front of the crowd is the two samurai dueling and it's completely silent. They pull out the swords, doesn't make any sound as well. So it's just like silent and like very slow, except for the samurais just not moving. I think that adds like a bunch of like just so many layers to the like suspense almost. Like I think it, it was pretty suspenseful, so I'd say suspense. Yeah, I, I really liked him. He almost kind of reminded me of John Wick, how he's just, yeah, yeah. How he's just focused on the task mm -hmm. of being better than everybody else. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> to be honest, there's not, even, there's not really a lot to the movie compared to what we see now. You know, in, in any Avengers movie, there's mm -hmm. eight different plot points, and yep. we all have to know the backstory behind every single Infinity Stone, and it just yeah. it gets so overwhelming. <laughs> but I feel like if they did what Kurosawa does, and they really, like, pushed it. Also, as well, like, the... I guess the, how would I say this? He shows the like landscape of the, like the battle, I guess. And you don't really see that in any other movies. I don't think I've ever seen another movie that shows like where they're fighting. And like, you see like a lot of different angles of the village and like the actual plan goes into detail. They like tell you what they're doing. You, you, you feel like you, you've lived in that village. Yeah, it's, exactly. It's, it's not like, um, I mean, even though, you know, Endgame, Avengers Endgame, it was yep. an amazing fight. You know, it was just endless miles of Wakanda. Yeah, just it was, it was, it was, it was just, yeah. Yeah, just, just like kind of grass and dirt. And it's like, okay, you know, this makes sense. Yeah. But, but with, with Seven Samurai, like how you're saying, um, you you really get to, to, to get to know not only the villagers, but how they're, mm -hmm. how they're living and and how, like, and, and why they were crying so much when, right. like, when the two huts were built, since yeah. they have so little, and you you really get to you really get to know that. And like you were saying with the event, like Endgame, just hordes and hordes of things. I think another like 
going back to it, like it plays like a book. It focuses on like individual duels throughout a battle, mm -hmm. like just one by one. It doesn't just they run into each other mm -hmm. and they they all fight and then one side wins. Yeah, it's, it's like it goes into detail about it. I was really worried that it was just going to be kind of like a mess of swords and stuff. Yeah, like, you'd hear I got your back, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. and then you know they they start cutting down people, but but uh, every single every single sword strike, every single you know, death was very deliberate. Thank you guys so much for watching. Let me play the outro. Make sure to like and subscribe. <laughs> <laughs> Great movie. You guys should watch it. Yep. Enjoyed it. Um, please give us full credit. <laughs> <laughs> 15 points, please.